Welcome to North Star Performance. Um, I'm Jake Weeb. I want to show everybody today how to set the camshafts, um, cam timing on a North Star engine. Um, so today we'll be working on a 1997 model. Um, I'll go through it step by step and show you my process. It might vary a bit from the GM process or, or whatever they have in the service manuals. The end result is the same and that's what we're after. Um, so there's no special tools needed. Um, I'll show you the process. Let's go. First we'll lay out all the timing components. Uh, these have all been washed and cleaned nicely. Then we'll get to work. So first and foremost we want to make sure that the three cylinder head bolts, the M10, sorry, M6 by 1.0 um, head bolts are in the ends of the heads. Um, so we've already torqued them down. We'll start with the plastic timing chain guides, I should say nylon. Um, so we'll slip, this is the left bank here, this is the right bank. So we'll take the, uh, the left bank nylon tensioner, we'll slip it in, like so. We'll put one of the shouldered bolts in, the bottom here. I'm just going to use an impact to quickly drive them home. That's uh, not to be confused with torquing it down, it still needs to be torqued afterward. We'll go with the, the aluminum guide. We'll make sure that there's no excessive wear on these. These look like they're in very good shape. It's a low mileage engine. Um, so we'll drop that one in from the top. It's got to say LB on there for left bank. And we're going to take one of these shoulder bolts and put it through here. Get it in the hole there. Do the same thing. We'll start on the other side same way on the right bank. Uh, so everything's in reverse on the right bank. Oops. So I should be looking at this from the direction I normally do. Here we go. Alright. Turn the flex plate. You can also do this with the uh, socket on the front. We'll turn that until they line up. Let's go right about there. I'll turn it back just a notch. So actually, this the timing of this actually means nothing. This rocket, um, they do have timing marks just to actually show you where top dead center is. So. Um, I will focus on that for the video, however when I do set the timing on these engines often I won't pay attention to it, because the only thing that's important is that you have the crank in the right spot and the four cams. So we'll put the uh, primary guide in. So I just put the two shoulder bolts in there to begin with, get it into position. It's always a good idea to start the bolts manually and here I am doing it with, a, with an impact. I have a lot of practice with this, so not too worried about stripping threads out. Alright, um, the primary tensioner. These are the most common to wear out on North Stars. So if you see any deep grooves in this nylon, just get a replacement. They're not that expensive. So um, they do send a nice pin here to keep it retracted. If it comes without the pin, all you have to do to retract it is push this small chain link in and then push it down. It's very very straightforward. So just put the bolts in for that. Get that into position. I should have mentioned before, um, the area where the, um, the secondary tensioners bolt up to, often there's built up sludge in those holes, like you'll see there's still a bit in this one. Just uh, take your, you know, whatever smallest finger you have and clean that hole out nicely. Clean the surfaces, use a little bit of brake clean if you need to to get all that 
Get the rest of it out. So what happens actually is over time there's uh, not a whole lot of oil that gets past the tensioner so it'll actually build up behind there. It'll actually seize up the tensioners also. Um, what I suggest to everybody when I tell them how to build these engines, obviously new timing sets, you can't go wrong with new, new timing components. They're often not worn out, they're just stuck. So run some brake cleaner through it, retract it, keep doing this. You'll, you'll actually find it'll squeeze out the old oil. You'll actually get the tensioner functioning nicely again. So there's no need to replace them often. So now, uh, my wonderful camera lady here, um, can you see the pins on the cams okay? Yes. Okay. All right, um, so these pins here, um, if I had a, a carpenter square or anything handy, I don't have anything handy right now, but the, if you took a carpenter square or a mechanic, machine square or whatever, you'd find that these pins should be, when you're finished timing it, 90 degrees from the face of the head. Every single one of them. So I'm going to, I already have these pretty much in the position. You can it and there's a hex cast into the cam. Um, GM makes it, or I think it's Kent Motor, they have a tool that'll go across the cams here and hold them into position. I don't feel the need to use those tools, so I just don't bother. Um, just get them roughly into position first. We have our guides in place. I'll just take one of the chains. I'll just drop it right down in here. Get it over the intermediate sprocket. Hang it over the cams. And your sprockets here, I don't know if you can zoom in on these. Can you see this okay? Yes. So there's going to be, um, this one's actually kind of faded, LI, there is a mark, and LE, there's a, there's a mark. So LI and LE. So this particular sprocket can be used on either of the left cams, so left exhaust or left intake. So whatever cam you put it on, you just have to make sure that that corresponding mark is vertical on it. So I'm going to start with the left exhaust cam. So L, I'm going to point it to LE. I'm going to lift the chain up, put the sprocket on, get the chain over it, pull the slack tight. This is my, my wrench, which in this case is just a one inch wrench. Very simple. I'm going to turn the cam to where I believe it is exactly 90 degrees from the face of the head. Hang the chain on it, put one of the cam retainer bolts in, and just snug it up while I'm holding the chain. So, wrong side wrench for this, but it turns the bolt, so let's quickly get, get it past the snug spot. Okay, now, while holding the chain up, I'm gonna take the other sprocket, which is identical to the first one I put in, I'm gonna turn it to the LI, These marks have to be exactly eight links apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then rotate the cam until it goes on. Make sure your slack is on the side where the tensioner should be. You can let go now. You can insert that bolt. Keeping the tensioner pushed on the chain a bit, just keeps it from slipping. Just snug that bolt up a little bit. Alright, so I want to verify that I have them 90 degrees. Feel free to use a machinist square, um, whatever you feel that you need to do to get this accurate. I've seen so many of these that I can just look straight down the cam and I know I'm accurate with it. So I will take my tensioner bolts, I'll take the tensioner, this one has just a bit of oil running out of it still, that's fine squeeze by the camera here so you guys can see better. I will just take, um, you can use a pin, but I'll just compress this, or push this chain link in here, compress it, put the tensioner into place, get the bolt started.
grab my, my impact, drive those bolts home. Now this is a step that many people have asked me about. I'll show you what I do to pre-tension the chains. Like you're going to see, there's a little bit of a little bit of slack in there. I will take a large wrench like this. I will put it inside against the tensioner inside this uh, tensioner shoe, and I will just squeeze it a little bit till you hear a little bit of ratcheting movement from that. Not too much. You don't want it too tight. That just sets the preload on it. So. Um, pressurized oil will come in here and you know put the proper tension on it. You just want to make sure that the chain's not loose so it won't slip over as you're doing assembly. So these cams are timed. I'll put the, uh, the intermediate sprocket retainer bolt on while I think about it. One good item to not forget. Just a uh, 15 millimeter head, just snug it up a bit. There, that still has to be torqued. I will uh, just move my cart to the other side. I'll get my camera lady to pause this. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna, going to do the uh, the right bank timing now. Um, again, I have the the um, pins on the camshafts vertical from the head, so 90 degrees off the face. So I'll take my chain on the guide. Hang it over, sprocket, get this into place. Once you have the chains in, you can actually take the other shoulder bolts, put them through the, uh, the access holes. Put them inside the tensioners. It's just a bit hard to get the chains over once the bolts are in, so I always put them in last or close to last. Okay, so hang that up and over, we'll do the same thing on this side, only with this side um, there is a sprocket that has a, an actual pin on here, and then this pin here will actually, it, it's the, uh, the reluctor for the, the cam position sensor, so you have to make sure this sprocket is in the right place. You can get them backward, if you do your vehicle um, it will not run right whatsoever. On 93 to 2005 engines, um, Let's say front wheel drive, that's what I'm focused on right now. 93 to 2005, um, that, this particular sprocket will always be on the right exhaust cam. On 2006 and newer, they actually moved um, the cam position sensor up to the, to the intake cam, so you'll have to just be careful on that. Uh, but for, uh, you know, for argument's sake here, this, this particular sprocket needs to be on the, the, uh, the right exhaust. So I'll start here with the, the right intake working my way through it, so get my cam into position here, get my chain into position, just make sure the chain is snug against that, uh, that guide, we don't want any slack on that side, take a cam retainer bolt, So again, right intake, that mark has to be up, and 90 degrees from the face of the head. Okay, so we'll take this one here, you can have it wrong, so just make sure you got RE up, and then this pin will be in the right spot. Don't, don't have to worry about that as long as you have this sprocket on the proper cam. So RE for right exhaust. Again, it's got to be exactly eight links apart between the marks. It's just uh, one easy reference point there. You just have to reposition the cam a little bit until it fits on there. Um, on 2000 or newer, you have roller cams. Um, they want to spring back pretty quick. You might need an extra helper on that to hold the cam into place on 2000 or newer engines. So this is a uh, flat tap of cam. It doesn't spring back as quick. A little bit more friction there holding it in place for you. So spin that bolt in. Take your tensioner, which this one is again soaked in oil. So the oil runs out, make sure it's moving freely. Make sure your surfaces are clean. Compress it. Get your bolts ready. 
put it in position. Put the bolts in. If you're a beginner to mechanics, um, I highly suggest forgetting bypassing the impact like this, um, just using, uh, you know, if you want to, a small nut driver or even just manual tools. You have to be very careful you don't over torque bolts. Okay, so take your wrench again. So you'll, you'll see there's a little bit of slack in this. So we'll put our wrench very carefully in here, not to be careful not to break the, uh, the nylon. Can you show the slack again? Yeah, a little bit of slack there. So we're, we're going to take up a little bit of that before we finish assembly. And be careful we don't uh, damage the nylon. Just get a wrench in there. There, one click, nice and snug. This engine is actually timed. So we will have to go back and torque all of the bolts. Um, I will double check off camera yet that all my marks are lined up because this, this is one spot you don't want to mess up. Don't be nervous about it, just double check your work because if you mistime a cam, if you mistime it bad enough, you're going to destroy an engine. If you uh, get it one tooth out, it might run or off, you might not be able to get a misfire out of it. So just, uh, like I said, take your time, do the job right, um, follow procedure. It's not rocket science, it is straightforward, um, but if you take your time, you won't go wrong. So I hope this has helped. Um, once we have everything torqued up, we'll put our caps on, our access cap, caps back on the bolt holes. We'll put our oil pump drive on the front. It's a, sorry, it's a crank driven oil pump, so we'll bolt that to the front, pre-lube it before we do. We can put our timing cover on, um, pre-lube all the cams, lifters, um, put a little bit of lubrication on the chains, like just drop some down on there to make sure you get all the parts lubricated on, on initial startup. Um, put your cam covers on, Button everything up, the engine's ready to go back in the vehicle.